morning and welcome to church. Would you all please stand and turn in your hymnals to page 98. Dear Heavenly Father, first of all, we want to thank you for Christ. Thank you for sending your Son to die on the cross at Calvary in payment for our sins, and that only by believing in his death, burial, and resurrection we know we have eternal life, and we can't lose that. Please be with the Goebel family this morning when we learned of Cody's passing. Um, please just be with Carol and his dad and his stepdad and, and everybody involved there. And just um, just be with them and give them some peace and some comfort in this time of grief. Please be with Tom and, and Barb Adams as they um, fight through some health issues and, and colds and sickness. Please be with Linda Baker. Uh, she is going to have surgery on Tuesday. Please guide the instruments in the doctor's hands as they perform the surgery. Please be with uh, my dad Ron as he's uh, continuing to heal from his leg and um, just 
be with everyone here today and their families um, with the weather being as it is that uh, you build a hedge of protection around them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Did we have any birthdays this week? No birthdays. Anniversaries? None. If you would turn in your hymnal to page 275. We'll sing all three. Precious Lord, take my hand, page 611.
announcements today. We'll have a service at Majestic Pines at 11 a.m. Garden Chateau at 11 a.m. Manor House at 1. Grand Village at 2 p.m. If you uh, need a tithe, uh, tithe receipt for 2017, you'll be able to get them from Ron. To reserve uh, a weekend at Camp Ruby this summer, also speak with Ron. And um, just start thinking about camp. Every week we get another week closer. Uh, we'll do the last song before the message. It's the handout, This World Is Not My Home. Good morning, the Good News Bible Church, and welcome. Today I'd like to address an issue, concern, and disagreement on, one, one, on, one, on what one must do to be saved. Also, how a person keeps their salvation. One does not need to be baptized to be saved. Baptism definition. Baptism is the religious rite of sprinkling water onto a person's forehead or of immersion in water, which symbolizes purification or regeneration and admission 
to the Christian church. In many denominations, baptism is performed on young children and is accompanied by name-giving. Synonyms for baptism are christening and naming of the child. Sin requires a perfect, pure, sinless blood payment, which is not found in baptism. If you would turn over to 1 Corinthians 1, 17. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 1, 17, For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of no effect. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. The definition of prudent is wise, judicious, and shrewd. Baptism was made for a symbol. Baptism is an outward act that symbolizes the inward phenomenon, phenomenon of accepting Jesus Christ's death payment on the cross of Calvary for the sins of the world. Just as circumcision, the purpose of baptism is to give visual testimony only. If you would turn to Acts 8, 26. Acts 8, 26. Now an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south along the road which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza, and this is desert. So he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority, under Cadus, the queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge of all her treasury and had come to Jerusalem to worship, was returning. And sitting in his chariot, he was reading Isaiah, the prophet. Then the spirit said to Philip, Go near and overtake this chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah, and said, Do you understand what you are reading? And he said, How can I unless someone guides me? And he asked Philip to come up and sit with him. The place in the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, his, in, his justice was taken away. And who will declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. So the eunuch, in 34, answered Philip and said, I ask of you, of whom does the prophet say this, of himself or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began, and beginning at this scripture, preached Jesus to him. Now as they went down the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What hinders me from being baptized. Then Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, now you have to realize in those days, 
They thought the heart was the center of the body. The heart was actually what did the thinking. But your mind is what does the thinking. So if you believe with your mind, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So he commanded the chariot to stand still, and both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and he baptized him. Belief on what Jesus Christ has done for you, his death, his burial, and resurrection, and then if you so choose, baptism as a symbol. Now when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught Philip away, so that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. If you believe with all your heart, In these days, humans thought that their heart was the core of their intellect, which is really your brain. The heart is a blood pump no more and no less. Even today, people say, it broke my heart when, let's say my dog died. No, your brain is sad. The chemicals in your body are what is sad. It has nothing to do with your heart. A visual testimony in the Old Testament was circumcision. If you would turn over to Genesis 17. Genesis 17.10. This is my covenant which you shall keep between me and you and your descendants after you. Every male child among you shall be circumcised. And you shall be circumcised in the flesh of your foreskins, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and you. He who is eight days old among you shall be circumcised. Every male child in your generations, he who is born in your house or bought with money from any foreigner who is not your descendant, he who is born in your house and he who is bought with your money must be circumcised, and my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. So it was a testimony, just like baptism. It's an outward expression of an inward belief. <clears throat> Praying to idols doesn't pay for sin. No blood is shed. Ezekiel 26, 1. And it came to pass in the eleventh year, on the first day of the month, that the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, oh, excuse me, Ezekiel, a priest and a prophet, speaks of idols as they are a stumbling block not to be worshipped. How they Cause a separation of true belief. Excuse me, Ezekiel 20, 24. Because they had not executed my judgments, but had despised my statutes, profaned my Sabbaths, and their eyes were fixed on their father's idols. 2 Kings 
2 Kings 17.41 So these nations feared the Lord, yet they served their carved images. Also their children and their children's children have continued doing as their fathers did even to this day. So if a little bit of anything gets in the gospel and perverts it, baptism, praying to idols, circumcision, which isn't for today, people will continue to think that that is the gospel and that can get you saved, and it's not true. So these nations feared the Lord, yet served their carved, carved images, also their children and their children's children, and they have continued to this day. So it just continues. Second Kings 17.12 says, For they served their idols, of which the Lord had said to them, You shall not do this thing. So the Lord had commanded not to do this, but they did. And they condemned all of their generations, future generations, to hell. Exodus 20. Three through five. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water underneath, under the earth. You shall not bow down to them, nor serve them, for I am the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children to the third and the fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing mercy to thousands, to those who love me and keep my commandments. So he's just letting them know that if you bow down to an idol, you're going to hell. You have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, his death, his burial, and his resurrection, you are now praying to something false. And the iniquity of your fathers will be upon the children to the third and the fourth generation and all the generations to come. Idols don't bleed. Psalms 106.36 Psalms 106.36 They served their idols, which became a snare to them. I've never been caught in a snare, but I've seen a few things that have. A snare you can't get out of. The tighter and tighter it you pull on it, it pulls on you until you're hung up. So they serve their idols and they become a snare and they can't get out of. Revelations 9.20 But the rest of mankind who were not killed by the plagues did not repent of the works of their hands that they should not worship demons and idols of gold, silver, brass, stone, and wood, which can neither see nor hear nor walk. It's 
so some will not let go of their idols. They see that idol as God, or their, as, as their God, which is not a true God. It is an idol, an image. Nothing, nothing that can shed pure blood for our sins. Another way people say they can they get to heaven is by Mary worship. Mary worship basically is an idol. The mother of Jesus Christ, she was not to be worshipped. She's a sinner like all of us. First of all, all have sinned, Romans 3.23. Romans 3.23, for all have sinned. It doesn't say many. It doesn't say a few. It doesn't say everyone but a, but a couple. It says all. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Mary included. Romans 5.12, In Romans 5.12, the book says, the word of God says, Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men, because all sinned. Psalms 51.5 Psalms 51.5 Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin my mother conceived me. So we are all conceived in sin. We all have sin in us from the very beginning. The blood makes you clean, white as snow. But whose blood? Not the blood of bulls and goats, the blood of Jesus Christ, his pure blood. Colossians 1.12 giving excuse me giving thanks to the father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light he has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sin. Not through idols, not through baptism, not through Mary worship. Over in the book of Luke, 146. In Luke 146, is Mary speaking. Jesus is Christ's earth mother. Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. Mary recognized that she was a sinner, that she needed a Savior, and the Savior was Jesus Christ. Mary was used instrumentally as a vessel to conceive the Lord Jesus Christ. She had more children. She never remained a virgin 
and can never be considered immaculate as, as, Roman, as, the Roman, Catholic, as Roman Catholicism has exalted her to be. James, excuse me, uh, turn over to Matthew 13.55. Is this not the carpenter's son? We're talking about Jesus Christ. Is this not the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? And his brothers, James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? And his sisters, are they not all with us? Where then did this man get all these things? So they were offended at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own country and in his own house. Now he did not do many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Mary is not mediatrix. Mediatrix refers to the intercessory role of the Blessed Virgin Mary as a mediator in the redemption by her son, Jesus Christ, and that he bestows grace through her. Scripture tells us whom our intercessor is between us and God the Father. It is Jesus Christ. Mary cannot shed pure blood because she herself is a sinner. Others might say they've taken communion, and communion will save you. Communion does not cleanse or heal. The cup of communion is a symbolic ceremony that represents the actual event that Jesus accomplished and that he said he would accomplish. First John. One seven. First John 1 John 1.7 But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. If communion saves us, we would never see the grave. We could just take communion and live forever. We die because we aren't cured physically from our common sickness of sin that is in us. If we add anything to the gospel, we have distorted it. The Greek word for communion is konoya, which means fellowship. Luke 22:19 Luke 22:19 And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Every time I pass a cemetery and see Jesus still hanging on the cross, I feel sorrowful. Why do I feel sorrowful? Because... 
Jesus Christ isn't hanging on the cross any longer. If he was still hanging on the cross, that means that would mean that his Father, God the Father in heaven, was not satisfied with his payment for sin and that we would all have to do something in addition to believe, then believe in his death, his burial, and his resurrection. He is risen, showing us the payment for sin has been paid in full. Matthew 28, 6. We can actually start in Matthew 28, 1. Now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus, who was crucified. 28.6 He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, Come see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead, and indeed he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to bring his disciples' word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, Rejoice. So they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. And Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brethren to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. The only way to get to heaven is by believing in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's all about his death payment for sin, his perfect blood payment, his sinless blood payment. It is not about baptism or idols or Mary worship or communion. It is about his blood payment on the cross of Calvary, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. And lastly, in Isaiah 53, 5. Isaiah 53, 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Ours. The whole world's transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. His stripes. Nothing we can do, but by his stripes. You turn over to First Corinthians fifteen one through four. Remember, we had 
spoke before about perverting the gospel, adding anything to the gospel, praying to idols, or Mary worship, or baptism, or taking communion. They become a stumbling block. And then for future generations, forever and ever and ever, they become a stumbling block because you've perverted the gospel. This is the gospel. It's found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel, which I preach to you, which also you, are, you received, and in which you stand, by which also you are saved. If you hold fast the word which I preach to you, unless you believed in vain, for I delivered to you first of all that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. He died for us. By his stripes we are healed. And he raised again and sits at the right hand of the Father in heaven as our intercessor, the only intercessor between us and God the Father. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you that you sent your Son to shed his perfect pure blood on the cross of Calvary and that all we have to do, the only thing we can do to be in heaven with you is to believe in his death, his burial, and his resurrection. And not through anything else, no communion, baptism, merry worship, idol worship, can get us to heaven. It is you and you only, your death, burial, and resurrection, and the belief that we have, the faith that we have in what you've done and only in what you've done that seals us the minute we believe and that we will see you someday in heaven. Please be with everyone here today as they travel. Please be with the Goble family as they've suffered a, a terrible loss and please just wrap your, your arms around them and and give them a, a hedge of protection. Build one around their family. And if they have any griefs, just let them bring it to you, and, and you, you will take care of them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.